Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back to break down Wednesday's NBA DFS slate 12 gamer. We finally got a full one. These last two smaller slates have not gone well for me on Monday and Tuesday, so hopefully we can turn it around tonight. Um, I, I really didn't have bad plays those days. I just didn't cash. I just made one or two mistakes here or there, and uh, kind of cost me cash. So we're we'll back at it tonight. Looking like kind of a chalkier slate uh, for cash, um, but could could turn. There's a lot of value, and so let us hop into this. We've got the big game to start it all off, the Houston Rockets and the Orlando Magic. For the Houston Rockets, James Harden is out, and I've got some pretty crazy stats on Chris Paul. So Chris Paul, when James Harden is out, which there's been about 230 minutes this year, uh, he sees a 30% usage, 60% assist rate, and a 10% rebounding rate with James Harden off the floor. Uh, Chris Paul almost certainly will be in my line. Uh, right now, I'm kind of, I have him in my line, but I, I'm having to play like, a, um, what's his face? Uh... I'm having to play like a Tony Snell or a Matthew Delavado. I'm having to play like a really cheap guy. And it's really, I'm like $100 off from the lineup I want um, with P.J. Tucker, who I'll talk about in a second. But I, 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 I don't think Chris Paul is where I want to come down from, but he's an option potentially. But he's my favorite play on DraftKings. Gordon is 6800 Um I don't see a whole lot of upside at this price. That's the issue. I like Eric Gordon. I like him a lot on FanDuel, but I don't see a lot of upside. Same with Trevor Ariza at 5'9". I just don't see... Like, he could he could do this, I guess, but I just... I don't see 43 points out of Ariza. And for 5'9", I feel like there are better plays today. One of my favorite plays is Gerald Green. Uh, with Harden, he got off about, we'll say, 7.5 attempts is the over-under. Um, and four threes over under. Uh, he grabbed a couple rebounds, take away the steals, but he should see an increase in points uh, in, in just overall production tonight against the uh, against the Magic, and he should see extra run. I would assume he gets into the mid-20s to upper 20s. So I'm very interested in Gerald Green tonight at 4,100. Another interesting play is the guards, how they do this with Bobby Brown, Demi, Demetrius Jackson and Briante Weber. Weber seems to be their favorite. Um, seems to be the guy they want to play in at 3K. Makes him very interesting. At small forward, or at forward, it's really just PJ Tucker for me. Uh, 3,800. Really wish he was 37 because it would get my lineup done. But he's going to have to play north of 20, upper 20 minutes. Um, I assume we get back to like a 29 instead of these with Harden out. I assume they play a little bit of smaller ball, put them at the power forward. Uh, and then one of my other favorite plays on the night is Clint Capella, 7,400. Uh, I'll be going here. I played him against the Lakers. That was just a, that was just a nightmare, dude. Um, it just went very poorly. Uh, but I expect him to get a lot of lobs from CP3. And without Harden, his rebounding rate goes up a smidge as well. Moving on to the Orlando Magic, we're going to breeze through a lot of these teams because I don't have a whole lot of interest in a lot of the players. So we'll go through as quick as we can with some of these. So with the Magic, the only guy I have interest in is Bismack Biombo coming in at 5,600. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, coming in at 5,600 should be good to pay off. Um... As long as he sees in around 30 minutes, he should be able to pay off the double-double uh, pretty pretty easily. Uh, the shots are kind of an issue. If he doesn't get there, he's got to get there on limited shots. So that's kind of the one issue I have with him. But overall, he should be able to get to that double-double. Rack up, I would say, at least one block um, and maybe a steal. Uh, so I do like him tonight at 5,600. He hasn't exactly made it into my lineups, but I do have some interest. Moving on to the Knicks. Uh, not a whole lot of interest here. They face off against Washington. I do like Michael Beasley. Um, this game could go small with Porter and Oubre on the court at the same time. Um, and if he sees 30 minute, 20, 20, 20 to 26, he can still hit value. Um, but if he sees near 30, if the game goes small, I really like it. So he's very interesting to me. Uh, other than that, 
just probably Kristaps Porzingis. I'm not going to... Nidal Aquino was sick last night, or he didn't feel well last night, uh, and only played 16 minutes, so uh, do with that what you want. I'm not sure if he's still sick or not, um, and so I'm just going to avoid the situation altogether. Moving on to the Wizards. John Wall and Bradley Beal are interesting, but I probably won't go there tonight. Um, Porter and Oubre become interesting as well with Morris, because I think this game probably goes small. So I like all of those guys. And then Gortat at 4,700 against the Knicks, not a bad option, but he could give you six points. So just keep that in mind. Uh, moving on to San Antonio, we've got a plethora of dudes out. We've got Danny Green out. we got Tony Parker out. Uh, we got Manu Ginobili out, and we have Kawhi Leonard out. Leonard, Parker, and Ginobili are out for rest, and Danny Green is out for an injury. Um, but it's probably just rest. So I really like Kyle Anderson coming in at 5,300. I wish he was 49, 48. Uh, but at 53, he should be able to hit value. Uh, should get the start at small forward. Believe his minute cap is gone. Uh, should see around 28 minutes to 20, maybe more with Kawhi out. Maybe near thir maybe a little bit over 30, I would assume. And his usage should go up a decent amount. Deontay Murray, I won't be playing him in cash, but I do like him tonight a fair bit. Um, other than that, I'll probably avoid the Spurs. They still got a decent amount of guys they can kind of rotate and play. Bertans is a little bit too expensive. If he was 3K, I would play him, but he's 4,000, so I'll probably avoid that. They'll probably play some combination of Bryn Forbes and Darren Hilliard and Patty Mills. It, it, I just, I'm, I'm not taking the chance tonight on this slate. So it's really Kyle Anderson on San Antonio. On Philly, uh, Joel Embiid is doubtful. Uh, we're going to be waiting on news. At least we'll get this before lock because this game tips at 7. So we won't have to wait. Dario Saric is priced way up. Same as Rashawn Holmes. So I don't know if I can go there with either of those guys. Um, but I do I do have some interest in TJ McConnell at 44. I know like Joel Embiid being out doesn't help him a severe amount. But he's going to play these minutes and his assist rate has been really good it was not good in the last game against phoenix but every other game of that he's had a pretty good assist rate um and he scored some good points in those games um other than that i'll probably just be avoiding the situation bob covington is 57 but it's against the spurs and even without um Kawhi and all and like half of their starting unit and i, I still I still don't want to pick on the Spurs too much, so it's really Dario Saric and not much else. Moving on to Minnesota, they play Brooklyn, and Jimmy Butler cannot get a price increase. I love Jimmy Buckets tonight. 8,600 against the Nets. Should be locked and loaded for in the 30s for minutes. Um, I, I, I think he's pretty much a lock to hit value. I mean, 40, 40 is not value, but I mean, I think he's a lock to hit 40. And they just refused to raise his price. He scored 50 against the Lakers, and they decreased his price by 100 bucks. So I'm firing up Jimmy Buckets again tonight, I think. Um, him and Chris Paul are really close for me. Other than that, Tyus Jones is appropriately priced, and Carl Anthony Towns is 9400 Like him in GBPs, but probably not cash. Uh, moving on to the Nets, we have some injury news. Karis LeVert is out. Damari Carroll is questionable, and... Uh, I feel like there was someone else out. Uh, I guess it's... I feel like... I think it's D'Angelo Russell um, that they keep saying is out. It, it annoys me because when they do their injury reports and they post it, it's like, this person this person out, and then Damari Carroll questionable. But I'm always looking at Russell like he... I just assume Russell is out now. But Karis LeVert is out. Damari Carroll is questionable. Um... We should get news on this before lock. If he goes ahead and sits, I like Alan Crabb and Joe Harris a lot. If he doesn't sit, then I probably will stay away from this situation. Moving on to Detroit. Uh, Avery Bradley is back tonight. He is good to play with a little bit of a minutes restriction, I believe. Uh, and so... Uh, I'm not going to touch this situation. Ish is 5,900, and Avery Bradley should play some point guard tonight. So... I am not even going to mess with the Detroit situation. Moving on to Miami, another situation I don't want to talk touch on, or I don't want to touch. Uh, Deion Waiters is out. James Johnson plans to play. Winslow is still out, but uh, 
I'm just not going here. There's no real good prices on any players, so I'm just going to pass on Miami. Moving on to Cleveland and Boston. Isaiah Thomas is out tonight. Um, won't be going there. Um, there's not much else to talk about. You can play LeBron if you want an 11-3 against Kyrie. But other than that, not going to be touching it. On Boston, the only guy I have interest on on Boston is Kyrie Irving. 8,500 gets to welcome in LeBron to Boston. I think Kyrie goes for 30 real-life points. It's just a matter of how many points does he get from assists and rebounds and steals. Moving on to Toronto and Chicago. Toronto fully healthy. And so really comes down to DeRozan, Lowry, and Valanciunas. No one else really interests me. So we move on from there. Chicago, Nikola Mirotic is questionable with, um, or he got upgraded to probable, okay. Got upgraded to probable about 50 minutes ago, so he should be on track to play. So other than Chris Dunn, really no, or Justin Holiday is only 5K. Those are the, those are the two I would look at. Um, David Nwaba got a price decrease, so I guess you could look, look there. Uh, Victor Oladipo is out tonight against Milwaukee. Lance Stevenson should start again at 6,500. Probably not playing Lance at 6,500. I don't think I can do it at 65. That's kind of, that's kind of egregious. I don't I don't think I, I don't think I can do that. Um, I mean, if he puts up 33, you're all right. If he puts up 46, you're going insane. I like him, but I probably don't go there. Other than that, not a huge fan of anybody here. Moving on to Milwaukee, Eric Bledsoe has been actually pretty quietly, pretty steady. Uh, scoring at least value in, I believe, 11 of his last 13 game or 15 games, 11 of his last 15, with upside for 8x and, I believe, 4 out of them. So he's been quietly sneaky. And I kind of like him tonight in a pace up matchup against Indiana. Chris Middleton, also nice, but he's actually seen his value kind of uh, dip. And so probably won't touch that. I do like Deli and Snell. Um, I mean, Snell has, he's either going to get you like 20s or he's going to get you nothing. Um, that's my one issue with kind of rolling him out tonight. Uh, Deli, a little bit more stable, a little bit more medium of the road. Um, that he can get you, so I do like Delhi tonight, but um, I wouldn't play those guys if you don't have to. Moving on, Golden State and Dallas. Steph Curry seems a little underpriced at 8-9, but if he's still on a minutes limit, uh, I can't go there, so um, probably not going with Steph Curry tonight, even though I like his price. Uh, Durant has come down, so I do like Durant's price as well. Seems a little bit underpriced. If Draymond Green goes ahead and sits, Caspi is already out. Uh, tonight, and so is uh, Andre Iguodala. Uh, if they go ahead and sit out um, a along with Draymond, I'll probably go with all the Jordan Bell. I don't know. He's expensive at 46. I don't know if I can do it. I mean, he's been good, but I don't know if I can do it. Um, it gets really interesting if Draymond Green goes ahead and sits out. Uh, he tweaks something in practice, I believe. Um... Yeah, he's his he sprained his ankle. Yeah, during a scrimmage in practice. Yep. So I would assume against Dallas they might sit him. We probably won't get this news before lock. It's an hour and a half. I assume he wants to test it and shoot around. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna assume he's gonna test it in pregame. So we probably won't get the news. I might just play Jordan Bell, and take the risk. Uh, could be really interesting there. Uh, David West wouldn't see really a minutes increase. Um, if Draymond sits, Curry probably has the ball in his hand a little bit more. Becomes interesting. Maybe if they all are out, I probably have to go Jordan Bell, Patrick McCaw. I mean, McCaw, it's his, van his fantasy value is not very good because he doesn't do a lot of rebounding. He doesn't do a lot of assists. It, um, but if Draymond sits, I can probably... I can probably do that. I can probably play Jordan Bell and Patrick McCaw if Draymond sits. Moving on to Dallas. No real interest on Dallas. Um, maybe Dennis Smith, but other than that, not a whole lot of interest. Moving on to New Orleans. You got Boogie against Utah. Pace down matchup. Um, Boogie's been light out, lights out, but I probably won't go there tonight. Spending 9600 on Chris Ball kind of restricts you, so... Uh, probably won't be play, paying for Davis or Brow. Moving on to Utah. Uh, Derek Favors, if you want to, he is 6K. 
probably not going to exceed value by much, but can hit value pretty easily. Other than that, not a whole lot of interest on Utah. Donovan Mitchell draws a good matchup along with Ricky Rubio, uh, but I probably won't go there. Moving on to Phoenix and Denver. Phoenix, pretty much nothing. Devin Booker saw a $600 price decrease. Um, should draw Gary Harris defense, so I don't love him tonight. Marquise Chris, interesting at 4600 TJ Warren at 64 a little bit interesting. Greg Monroe, I love tonight against Denver. Uh, he should get the start. Tyson Chandler played last night, I believe. Let's just... Let's just check. Hold on. How many minutes did Tyson Chandler play last night? Tyson played 25 minutes last night. So, yeah, he should rest tonight. It should be Greg Monroe. I'm going to probably take the risk. I mean, Monroe just smashes when he starts. I mean, it's 30 points. It's 30 points. 30 points. I mean, if he gets me 23, that's even fine. But 30 points, 20, 30 uh, a little weird 16 and then he had these were when they were trying to play and I don't know why he only played 12 and 17 minutes a 40 about a burger I mean he's gonna play north of 20 high 20s low 30s so probably gonna go to Greg Monroe really love him tonight uh, Denver uh, Will Barton got downgraded to questionable with an illness if he goes ahead and sits out um, I like Tory Craig at 3500 I probably go there in cash um, in that lineup that I really liked if nothing else opens up because he should see in the 20s without Will the Thrill in the game. Uh, unless Malik Beasley or someone steals minutes, but I doubt it. Uh, Gary Harris would see a bump in shots maybe, a little bit of a bump in shots, but Jamal Murray has been absolutely on fire. I don't know if I can pay 6700 for Jamal Murray, but he's been absolutely lighting it up. Moving on to OKC Lakers, Andre Roberson remains out. Um... I don't know. I played Raymond Felton, and he he did pretty well. Got 21 points that last game when uh, uh, Roberson was out. Alex Abrines, I don't think I can play him. He just doesn't do anything. He plays some minutes, but he just doesn't do anything. Uh, other than that, probably won't touch this. Moving on to the Lakers, we've got Kuzma ruled in, Lonzo Ball ruled out, and Julius or, uh, Brooke Lopez ruled in. So... Probably not touching this. The only guy I would touch is Jay, is Tyler Ennis because uh, the coaching staff, or Luke Walton said that he likes how Tyler Ennis has been playing, so he should start still for Lonzo Ball. Uh, and so he's about the only interest I have at 3,800. Uh, but he's got to play minutes. I don't know with Contavious Caldwell Pope back tonight if he sees less minutes, like around 18 or something. Um because he's not like an extreme fantasy point per minute producer, but we'll just see. Uh, we won't get news on it, really, so that's kind of an issue. Um, I'm going to have to dig in on the Greg Monroe, figure out, try to make as as much confidence as I can have in Greg. I, I'm like 90% sure he should play tonight, because the way they've been doing it, Tyson Chandler plays the front end of the back-to-back. -back. Greg Monroe plays the back end of the back-to-back. -back. So I think I'm just going to take the risk. I'm going to play Greg Monroe. Um, if I lose, I'm going to cry because it's going to piss me off because it's been that way the whole time. If they do not do it tonight, it's just going to annoy me. The issue is, is that Marquise Chris, we'll go back to this real quick. Marquise Chris has been playing a lot more minutes and playing well. Um, he's been seeing high 20s into the 30s. Might just be safer to play Marquise Chris and forget about, uh, Greg Monroe. But I feel like Greg Monroe is safer as weird as that sounds, because he doesn't play every day. I feel like he's safer. Um, let me see here. Let me do a little looking at this. So, I clicked on Alex Lynn. Marquise Chris. They haven't had a back-to-back -back in a while. They haven't had a back-to-back -back since he started playing well. Because um, Greg Monroe hasn't played any of those days, right? Yeah, his last game was the 21st against Memphis. And I don't think Chris was dominating. Yeah, Chris only saw 16 minutes in that game. Okay, well, maybe I don't go Greg Monroe. With Marquise Chris balling out, maybe I just go Marquise Chris. I mean, he should be able to hang better in this Denver-Phoenix game than, than uh, Greg Monroe. And he should also probably get garbage time minutes. I'm going to have to look into this... Um, 
figure it out. But I like both of them. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out how they're going to do this with Greg Monroe. Like, does Monroe see, like, Tyson Chandler 25 minutes? Uh, they really only have a three-man big rotation with Len. It'll be Len, Monroe, Chris. I guess they can play TJ Warren or Dragon Bender. Uh, they're not going to play Dragon Bender at power forward, I doubt. They all play minutes. It's just annoying. I don't even know how they have the minutes to play all these guys. You look at the box score, it's like... Did they play, like, does TJ, like, did they play TJ Warren at, like, shooting guard? Because the minutes just, like, don't add up on on uh, Phoenix sometimes. But, yeah, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. It's just a two-game slate, so it'll be a really quick breakdown. But I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.